What's up, guys? May 14th. It's been a while since we've been here. Got Don Kingo on the line, Igor Henriquez, Lamar Grant, ready to talk about OKC, but we'll give him a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First, we're going to start with the Raptors. Last time we left off, nobody really gave Raptors a chance in uh, Game 7 against Indiana, but uh, they proved us wrong. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, you know, did. DeMar and, and Kyle weren't at their best, but they got it done anyways. Um, we're going to fast forward there because it's been too long of a time. We're now in the Miami Heat series. Going into Game 7 tomorrow, Raptors fans are a little bit maybe weary about the situation because you know, we've got Dwayne Wade with all these veterans, Joe Johnson on the team. Are we going to not give the Raptors a chance or are we going to give... Well, you know what? In terms of like, like going back to, you know, it's been about two weeks or so. I didn't give the Raptors a chance against the Pacers. I feel better about their opportunities against the Heat based really? on the way that Kyle and DeMar have been playing uh, as of late. Okay. Uh, I think yesterday's uh, game was um, was weak in terms of, of defensive play. I think Corey Joseph had a really bad game. Uh, I thought Kyle played pretty well. I thought DeMar played well, but the defensive int intensity wasn't there. I personally, in my head, says they're, you know, my heart says they're going to win. My head says... It's one of those things where they're setting... Because I gave them no chance against Indiana, and they won. And I have a belief they'll win tomorrow, so, which usually means they lose. So I'm, I'm going to say they're going to win tomorrow, but I, I'm, I'm a little bit more confident because I think that they seem to play a lot better at home, which they, obviously they should, and the defensive intensity is much better. Uh, there's no white side for Miami still because he's not going to play in the, again in Game 7. I think they'll pull it up because I don't see what happened like yesterday happening at, at, the, at the Arcana Center where Dragic just owned them. And they, again, Corey had such a bad de defensive Ooh. game. And yeah, there was a lot that went wrong with the Raptors yesterday that I, I think at home will get corrected. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going to take the Raptors to, to win it. Usually that means I'm wrong, but I, I'm going to stay with, with, with the faith and say they'll pull it out in game seven. Don, we're going to go to you right now. What do you got to say about the Raptors? <laughs> Step up for them though. Oh, Pat Patterson has to step up. He's been quiet the whole series. Yeah, he's been quiet the whole series. He has to have a big game. Um, um, I'm going to piggyback from what uh, Iggy said. I think uh, Corey Joseph needs to play a lot better. Um, he had a bad game last night, and he doesn't usually have a bad game. Like He's been solid the whole playoffs. So um, I expect him to come out a lot better. And Ross, you know, he has to have a huge game. Basically, the bench has to come up huge because the bench didn't really show up last night. Um, so, uh, not last night, but, but game, game six, they didn't really show up. Yeah, so, nice. As long as the bench shows up and Kyle and DeMar do what, they, what, they, what they've been doing the past couple of games, I think the Raptors are okay. Just a couple points on, on what we were discussing earlier. There's the three things to me that need, they need to address in game seven. The Heat went with a six foot six lineup, uh, average height yesterday. They didn't really use it. Uh, Biombo didn't get enough touches early. Didn't get involved early like he did in Game Five. Kyle's got to be wary of the fouls. He's been he, yeah. he's been problematic the last couple games. He he takes a lot of chintzy fouls trying to get charges. He's got to be a little bit more wary where he has to stay in the game. If he if he does the same thing, they're gonna be in a, in a whole heck of a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, I, 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 and again, they just have to take advantage of their size inside, and they're not doing that. And, and I think that's where, again, it goes back to giving more touches to Biombo and, and getting more stuff inside. When they drive, they're fine. When they just settle for the, for jumpers, I'm a jumper, I know Lamar's going to go on that because he, he thinks they do that quite a bit. They're, they're, they become one-sided, and they can't do that. DeMar, again, you go on my Twitter feed, I was I was grilling or we grilling know. DeMar the whole, the whole time. And rightfully so, he wasn't performing. Up until the last few games, he wasn't performing. I, uh, I was cracking jokes that he was like, he was half Portuguese, a good bricklayer, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, was doing, I was doing some good stuff over there. I was doing, but the last few games, he, you know, he's played well. I can't say he's been driving, he's been getting to the foul line. 
he keeps that up and, and Kyle does his thing, they'll be fine. But again, Kyle's got to stay in the game. Yeah. I'll let Lamar go and then I'll jump in. Lamar, go ahead. Okay. Uh, game seven. Uh, I, I just have to, I have to take it back to something else. So two seconds. <laughs> I, I gotta, first, you said that no one gave them a chance. That's not true. You guys believe that the Raptors are going to win at first. And then the way they were playing, you guys had dealt with them, right? Yeah. Okay, fine. And I was a big factor no, in that no, dealt. No, no, no. Are you saying the last time we did, we did the podcast? No, we did seven in the no, 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 before. before so remember, remember when we had the predictions and before you guys were saying they were going to win, then they started playing bad. Oh, oh I mean, beforehand, yeah, yeah, beforehand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then when we got to the last podcast, you guys all started to say, okay, you know, and I brought yeah. doubt in your guys. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I'm happy <laughs> so, so I'm happy about that. So what I feel like is the Raptors, so now we're going back now to the Miami series, is I haven't seen them once. I don't care if they, I think they won, they beat Pacers one time by 20 points in one of the yeah, games, right? Yeah. Even in yeah. that game, I have never... I, since the playoffs started, I haven't seen the Raptors play good in my eyes. I, it's almost like that old Inspector Gadget cartoon where they're just squeaking by and winning, but they're not they, like they're not the reason. I, I don't know how they beat the Pacers because they should have lost that series for sure. sure like, really and I don't know how they're doing this to Miami because they're not playing well. Like uh-huh. even when Larry and De, uh, DeRozan are scoring their thirty, it doesn't look like they I see. All, right? They're not all playing together. They're not the same playing together. Like, like, so we're gonna get to OKC, and I know D is gonna get at me. <laughs> but when it's not, it wasn't just it wasn't just Durant. <laughs> Going off the way Paul George went off on the Raptors, it wasn't that they were everybody the team, the was playing was amazing, yeah. I, like from top to bottom. Adams was out of this world to me. I, I love his game, by the way. But they all were just together. The Raptors, it just looks like there's one guy keeping it together. Yeah, like, it really yeah it's, 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 there's nothing that they're doing. Like um, I remember the announcers were saying before, man, we just need one of our all stars to do well, right? And then yeah. yesterday, I heard them saying. Well, DeRozan and Lowry did their part, and now we need the other players to yeah. step up. Like, why is it always an excuse? Like, just play basketball together. See, see to me, like, yesterday, I didn't think they, they played a bad game on, on the offensive end of things. Their defense just w- was a lot worse than what it's been in the series. There's I think yesterday, bad calls. Dragic was charging, and they were giving him calls. Yeah, that was another game. But again, like, how many times did Dragic the dra- the just uh, come in different. for uncontested layups? Like, I could have put up 20 the way that they were guarding Dragic. And again, I, that, that's saying something. No, we're going to put Igor on the court next no, week. But the, but the refs set the president because anytime you went near, there was... T- Dragic was running, and I'm not, I'm not a Raptor fan, that's clear, but I'm watching it and I'm saying, this isn't fair. I'm seeing Dragic initiate contact and the other yeah, point are getting the foul. So, what, so you have to set the president, I'm not going to get fouled out of the game, I'm going to do the best that I can, back off and hope that he misses. So now it's turning into a layup fest because they don't want to get fouled out of the game. So the refs set the president, they used to do that with LeBron back in the day, don't touch him. And now he scores 40 because am I going to get fouled out of this game and not be able to help my team? I'd rather just make it difficult for him to miss Exactly, or something. Yeah. I'd rather just be there in his eyes and hopefully he misses or maybe one of my big men will come and block him. But they couldn't do anything that game. It was very, I, I, yeah, that man. was the only badly ref game I saw. Oh, I've, seen, I've seen plenty of bad. Like the NBA re- referee, well, I think we'll probably should get into that at some point. The referee yeah, in, in the playoffs have been, has been terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, like the some of the stuff that's been going like going on and with, with the refs, the, the Lowry, for example, yesterday, yeah, there was a couple calls on the drag situation, but a lot of his stuff is a lot of like, it's is, been, is he gonna is he gonna beat Luol? That was that was a bad call, but is he gonna really get a, 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 a loose ball or Luol? Dang, he's not. He's gotta be smart in those situations. He tries to draw a lot of charges Who? when he's moving. Lowry. Kyle, and, and those are legitimate, like those are fouls because he's not set. Yeah, yeah. He's been like that the whole. But, again, but he he's plays around a little bit too much with that, and he's he gambles, gotta, he gambles, gambles too a lot. much, especially it seems like on the road. He fouled yeah. out of the other yeah. game in Miami. Don, you want to say something? No, no, I'm just saying he does gamble a lot. Yeah. He gambles a lot, and, and when you put the refs in a position to make calls, they're not always going to swallow the whistle. Sometimes, in like what happened yesterday, he gambles a lot on stupid things. And he gets those calls. And then he's kind of questioning. He went into the game saying, I'll play all 48 minutes if I can. Last year was he was fat and he couldn't play all 48 minutes. This year is he's getting all these fouls and, the, and his coach has to take him out because he's going to foul out. And, and the funny thing is, that I, I mean, we made the point in the Indiana series and where Vogel ended up uh, like messing up and I think costing Indiana the series with his coaching. This series should already be over. The Raptors should have already won this series because the, the team, game, in game four, in game four, they should have won that game. Kyle and Demar were not playing well, but they, 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 the Heat were not playing all that well. And then when Kyle fouled out and and so Joseph forth, cost them the game. He shot all these. Threes. Exactly. I don't know what he was thinking. I've never yeah. seen him play like that. Before. Yeah, but the coach asked him to do that. But so see, that right there, that's that's, that's, that's on Dwayne Casey. Right. That's the problem. Okay, you have to. Okay, go, getting back to that game real quick. Kyle fouled out. Demar couldn't. Hit a, a layup, literally couldn't hit a layup. 
Who do you go to in that situation? Well, Arsenal has it a shot. So they say, Corey Joseph, it's no. a tie game. Not him. It's an ISO. Who do you give the ball to? See, All, like that, I would have given it to T. Ross. I don't like T. Ross doesn't make a lot of stupid decisions. He was shooting the ball well in, in, yeah. in that game. Very well. He, was, he did yeah. not even get a touch. It was yeah. ISO for 20 seconds and Corey Joseph going, going up. Made yeah. no sense to me. And, and I hate to break it. Like, I know you know, we, we talked about this. Like, like the heat went small and so forth. 12 seconds left. Dwayne, you know Dwayne Wade's going to try to get, get into the lane. You need Bismack Biombo on the court. You do not have Patrick Patterson play center there. You need a rim protector. To me, that was a bad coaching by Dwayne, and it, he cost us that game in terms of his, of his imagination, in terms of play calling, and his, his, his substitutions. His substitutions. They were not good. I got to say what I have to say about the series so far because I haven't had a chance. Um, like you said, people, like even Lamar said, and DeMar's taking these shots, and yesterday he did a good shot. They're all bad shots, like mid range shots, you don't want to take them, but he hit, he hit a lot of them. The um, problem is, when you, even though Whiteside's not there, they have a lot of guys with a foot almost in the key. So once you drive, the whole defense collapses. So if that's the case, you have to hit outside shots. You want to still attack when you can, but you can't go in there into bodies every time expecting to get calls like we talked about. Because when defense has their feet set and there's four guys waiting for you in the paint and you're starting at 18 feet out where he takes his jumper, you don't have much margin for error. You're going to have the Euro step around two or three guys and go for a layup, right? Yeah, but let me ask you this, Jay. How was their ball movement yesterday? Terrible. But their ball movement's always terrible. No, yeah. always. No, no, no. But you guys are yeah, saying they're good. No, here's the thing: in game, in game five, early on, again, once it, before they started settling, that first quarter where they played game five, their ball movement okay, was pretty hold solid. On. Let Don, hold on, let Don. What's your say? No, I'm just saying, like the Raptors' ball movement, it, 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 everyone knows it. If you don't, don't move the ball well, we're exactly. like bottom of the league when it comes to that. And the thing too is, like you guys will watch a game. We all know how the Raptors play right now. He knows more than anybody. It's ISO ball. When the Raptors have one out of seven games in the series, like they did in game five or whatever it was, where they moved the ball, you guys can't be like, oh yeah, Raptors moved the ball well. Doing it well for one game is not anything. But and the same thing with their defense. Same thing with their defense. I, always, I said yesterday in the chat, their, their defense at times is not bad. It's, it was the game against Miami where I think it was Goran Dragic ended up hitting a, court, uh, a three at the top of the arc because uh, Corey Joseph overcommitted, so they passed it out. Right. And Damari Carroll was the same, guilty of overcommitting and... Yeah. Right? And that's how you, those are the kind of calls that end up killing you. And the Big Mac Biombo, uh, remember the foul, uh, the putback the yesterday? Goal, yeah, they, right? they, they called it, it, they, they called it, yeah. It's right. all those little the things that kind of add up, yeah, right? Yeah. So your margin for error is small. You can't be leaving guys wide open for three. You can't have extra collapsing and, and double teaming guys. So it's tough. Yeah, but like, like for example, you saw a lot of that yesterday where they were got, leaving guys wide open for jumpers, you know, like easy, easy layups. You didn't see a ton of that in game five where their defense was just much better. And again, even in game seven against Indiana, their defense was was a lot more a lot more centered down. Dude. They have games where they, they just don't defend well. Like I showed you the video where, where Corey Joseph was defending Dwayne Wade. He spun in a circle. Jesus, he spun in a circle, and, and I don't even know where he went. He landed on somebody else, and he gave Wade a and free three pointer. He was terrible. See, but this is the, this is my thing. You guys are being fooled. The only people are saying they have good ball move. That's not what happens. The no. games where people think that they're moving the ball well are the games where the outside guys are hitting all their threes. So Larry and DeRozan will drive and they have no choice but to pass they'll kick out they'll hit a three and it's like Everybody's oh the like Raptors are passing yeah, exactly. that's not ball movement no, there's not. no motion offense happening where people are passing and passing and exactly. to get an open man it's not that it's only when they're hot they're magically a good but it's either person. that or it's the fact when DeMar gets the ball usually it's DeMar more than anybody and Kyle had this yesterday where he was about to take a jumper I think it was a minute or two left in the game about 20 feet out diagonally at the extended free throw line he went up, there was no shot there, so what did he do? He threw it out to DeMar, he took a desperation three from five feet behind the line, it was yeah. a, and it was a, a shot clock violation. And even you're saying, even if Kyle wants to take that shot, it's not even a bad shot, he takes all the time, take the shot. A couple things that they do is, and, I, and I've noticed it throughout the playoffs, is they start um, too late in the shot clock, where yes. they go at about eight to 10 seconds, yes. in, and, 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 that's, and that's how they, they mess up half the time. But there's no motion on the, it. The issue is that when, uh, when the Raptors are playing with intensity on defense, it helps their offense because they're, they're, it causes a lot more fast break points, and it causes. That's why I guess to me, I consider that ball movement in a sense where they're, they're causing a lot more turnovers and they're moving the ball better on offense because their defense is dictating so much on the other end. It makes them seem like they're moving the ball much better, where they're giving more open looks because their defensive intensity is causing teams to make more mistakes. But what do you mean? Yeah. But what do you mean the defense is is making ball it, movement? It, it, there's a defense, the defensive intensity because they're causing more turnovers mm -hmm. and they're playing so much better defensively. Mm -hmm. It's causing them to, to get up the floor quicker. It's causing yeah. more disorientation for the other team because 
they're getting a lot more fast breaks. But that's, but that's not ball movement though. It's it's considered it's not ball movement as in like in terms of set plays, but yeah. it's causing a lot more movement so in terms saying, of up yeah, and down, getting yeah, down more quicker. But what happens when we're set? That's two, that, that's been the problem. Two go and you're down one. They don't pass. They don't even know how to do that. But the, no. but the issue with that is that uh, again, that's where I think they missed a lot of Valanciunas on the on the pick and rolls and stuff, and they're trying to get guys like I think they had like Baby Nagara had a good one with Kyle where he gave him the pick and roll. Pick and roll. They, they don't have that kind of same fit thing with Valanciunas well, not out there, then they're not used to it. It's causing a, a little bit of the problems. It's not all their problems, but it's again to me, it's they're starting off late on the, on, the, on the shot clock with like eight to ten seconds. They they shouldn't be doing that. They should get stuff moving earlier on. Uh, and then the, to me again, it's just they they play differently in terms of the the defensive intensity when it's stronger. They just seem to be better on offense when they're playing stronger defense. Like like game seven, they were in there. Hard, like I didn't see a lot of that. I didn't see a lot of guys diving for stuff yesterday. It was it's completely different in Game Five. I saw guys diving for I balls. Think, I think too. It was, it's just weird when they're on the road. I love the whole diving and everything. Everybody's hurt in this series. Demari Carroll, JV. Do you guys don't want to hit the deck anymore? Kyle on his shoulder, uh, his elbow. There's nothing else his elbow. Team going to. <laughs> it's just not, you get to a point. You get to a point where it's like if it's not a Game Seven and you're you're like you said, Demari's a yeah, wrist. Everybody's hurt. Yeah. Um, DeMar's hands hurt. You're not going to dive on the floor for balls every time and further risk injury. This team's already on oh, their last feet. Uh, Don, I wanted you to say what you got to say. Well, I feel like the only thing with the Raptors, the Raptors can match everywhere, but I feel like they need to keep Biombo in there. And even though Biombo on offense, he, like, okay, a problem people were saying is, okay, if the Heat have a small lineup, use your size to their advantage. The only advantage the Raptors have is Biombo inside and you can't score anyways. So that's kind of negated, right? The only thing you want, it's not you can throw in the ball like JV and say, go to work, get me two points. His only way of scoring really is he'll get an offensive rebound and you'll go for a dunk and he'll get fouled. Well, let's let's be honest about it. I mean, like, would the Heat be doing that if JV was was in the series? No, because there's no way that Winslow could, could guard him at center. No chance. Yeah. Yeah, no, but, no, they wouldn't. But then at the same time, you have someone like Hazem or Mario Sotomayor who's a shell of himself. Yeah, Mario played five right? minutes and then they bench him the rest of the game. Exactly. Yeah, he's terrible. He's a shell of what he so, himself. Th- yeah. like the series in general, I feel like, is just... I, I tweeted this before. It's last man standing, literally, because all these guys, they're, they're forced to play lineups that they wouldn't really play in a healthy regular season. So, yeah. so Don, like, who, who's your starting five then? If, if I were to switch it? Yeah. I would probably throw in James Johnson in there. At, at center? Or... Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like James Johnson actually played some good defense on late. Um, he did for five minutes. He did, he did. He had some good defensive, like, you know, possessions, and I don't know, I just feel like he just, he's not getting a chance. Like, you know, he's not getting a chance to really, like, show what he can do. I mean, I feel like he's, like, probably, like, the freshest body on the on the team that can probably do something. Looks like he's been eating some McDonald's, though, eh, Don? He's got a few months of and that's he why. Was but, moving pretty well last, uh, the last game, though. For, the only thing with him is, I, you know what, Donald, I even agree with you. Start him for a bit, but I think that he'll only give you, like, be able to give you maybe 20 minutes of time because exactly, he's yeah. not in playing like, shape, like, right? Like major minutes, but, yeah. like that. Just but it'll like, help. But right? again, you got to think, like, the, Raptors are, the Raptors are still out-rebounded by the Heat, even though the Heat went small. That's a big problem, you know, in my guys, opinion. Guys, that's not making sense to me. If you're, I don't understand. If, if you have a team... And you have a you've met you're missing um Valentinus he's hurt. Okay, fine. You don't adjust to what the team is doing. They should be adjusting to you. Why are why are we making James Johnson our center? They we have a Biombo, even though he's not like a vicious scorer, but he can get second chance opportunities that leads to us. They should be adjusting saying, What do we do? Yeah. But now we're gonna adjust and go small because they lost white side and now they have to go small, so we're gonna go small with them. You, have, make any I think you know what you do negate your advantage you yeah. have by not playing Biombo because yeah. like Biombo is your advantage in the series right now. Like both starting both. centers are gone, so your advantage is Biombo. If you take him out and don't yeah. have the minutes, and it also compromise your defense, which has been a big problem. I'll be the first one. Anybody that knows, anybody follows the Raptors knows this right away. Biombo is by far, I think, their best defender, right? Yeah. Um, so no when he's out of the game, their defense gets even worse. And we've already yeah. said how bad their defense has been. But uh, true. But like, the thing with, with the way the way the Raptors were playing, like even last night, how many times did yeah the Rosen hit a lot of those shots? How many times would they just ch- chuck up shots with no with no center uh, down there? 
and then there would be no, they, they were just killed on the offensive rebounds. Those are essentially turnovers. Maybe exactly. They they're, they're, they're shooting, there's no center over there, there's no chance to get a rebound. And, they're just chucking them up. And people think that you have to be an offensive scorer to create fouls, which is not the truth. People jump on your, like, Tristan yeah. Thompson gets fouls all the time because he goes for offensive boards and people are holding him down because they can't hold him. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be, you don't have to readjust your stuff mm -hmm. to work. They could, They should be, what should be happening on interviews in Miami is then saying, what are we going to do? We need to deal with the height of Toronto. They have, we lost our big guy, what should we do? But instead, now they, they seem fine, they seem comfortable. I watched the way Miami played in their demeanor. They didn't, they didn't look like it was an elimination game to them. They were just playing basketball. Dragic was the one that was playing vicious, but it looks like they almost look like they have it in the bag. Like, we're the ones who look scared all the time. We're up, and they were acting, like, I'm just watching the demeanor of the players and the way that it's going, and I'm hearing how people spoke. Like, at the gym, I'm hearing people talk about how we should change our lineup and what things are going wrong. It looks like we're the ones who are losing. Losing the we're mind the second, Yeah, we're, we're second place. We were in the lead. We should have won the other game. Um, game four. Game four. But yet, we still look like we're supposed to lose. Yeah, so, Casey cost us that game for, for doing exactly that, matching up with Miami going small. Because I think that Biombo should have been in that game. Yeah, it should have yeah. been. It was crazy. No, I definitely agree with that. When he took out Biombo for the overtime, yeah. that was a big mistake. And I think everyone in Toronto was talking about that. Mm -hmm. Because like, of... what was he doing there? Take, take... Like, and his excuse for it was just, it didn't even make sense either. So I, I think he, he knew deep down that he made a mistake. Take a look at game five and take a look at game six and how they used Biombo early. Game five, Biombo was dunking the ball, very getting a lot of offensive touches. Game six, again, he had his, he had his issues like grasping the ball. They didn't get him involved at all at the beginning. He, he got his boards. He'll always get his boards. The difference is they were using him much more in game five compared to game six. And I think that's a, a bit of an issue. That's why they, the Heat were still didn't really matter how small they were because they weren't using Biombo properly. I, mean, I don't know he's not a great scorer, but you, you can still use his size. This is what I was going to... Go go you don't have to... Like, I'm watching guys like Dennis Rodman who couldn't score for the life of them would dominate games without scoring. I don't know. We don't yeah. have to set plays for Biombo. Exactly. Just let the guy lose. This is what he, I, he, could, he could do. He could do putbacks. He could get uh, blocks that will give us opportunities. He could get a second chance opportunities. He could do many... Even if someone comes and drives and like, uh-oh, Biombo, he blocked my last shot and he passes away. That's still on Biombo. I mean, that's up on the yeah. stat sheet, but he's the reason that guy didn't take that later. There was a meme I saw Dwayne Wade sitting on the bench with a sad face. If I can, I'll put it as the uh, image for the podcast. <laughs> and it makes a cloud like a comic book, and it's a sad face, and it sees Biombo's face with the figure like yeah. this. Like, oh, he yeah. can't well, Jay, Jay mentioned, I think like, Biombo could have gotten started yesterday if not for that rim intervention. I think that could have gotten him pretty hyped to start up the game, and then they screwed him on that call, which was a horrible call. Yeah. Uh, by, the, by the officials. But I want to kind of add to what Lamar was saying. Although, like, everybody has this thing where it's like, if you're not scoring points, you're bad for our offense and even with Biombo. If Biombo's on the floor and you're running your offense, okay? And let's say um, Justice Winslow's guarding him, for example. If it's against anybody else, maybe Justice Winslow's sagging off and cheating and trying to get something. Problem is, if DeMar's gonna throw up a jump shot, you know who's gonna be on the glass first week. Yeah. It's gonna be Biombo. So Winslow can't leave his defender because he knows that if he leaves Biombo, he's gonna grab a rebound by himself and slam it with nobody yeah. defending him. So he is essentially helping your offense, just not in a, a, in a scoring, like he might not get the point, he might not get the original basket, mm -hmm. But his job of keeping his defender with him and keeping everybody on a one-on-one -on -one, as opposed to when DeMar drives, there's, there's kind of compensation. Yeah. I think that he's helping their offense yeah. in that sense. So, so let me throw something at you, Jay. So yes, in yesterday's game, how would you rate the Raptors' one-on-one -on -one defense in that game based on, on how many... Terrible. Yeah, it was and, terrible. and that was the problem, in my opinion. They, they, yeah. couldn't, they couldn't keep anybody in front of them, yeah. and Biombo had to come on, on the help. And again, the Heat's passing was pretty decent. Their one-on-one -on -one defending was horrid yesterday. That's, that's, why lost. I'm, that's why they lost the game. I'm all for helping guys. Like, well, even when we play, you, you build a defense so that there's always a second help defender in case you get blown by. But at some point, especially in the end game with these defenders, there needs to be some kind of accountability. You want to keep your man in front of you. Dragic went to the rim at ease against everybody. And I think, honestly, it hit, even if he didn't score in every drive he had, the collapsing of the defense and the penetration really compromised Toronto's defense, and they had a lot of shots because of Dragic's drives, whether they were directly his points or kickouts or whatever they were. So the Raptors, if there's one guy, it sounds terrible, like Dwayne Wade you gotta watch out for, but you can really contain one guy, I feel like it's Dragic, because he's the catalyst to this team. If you can kind of keep him in I'm, front of you, I think that you'll be better off. Uh, on that Dragic question, I've been, I've been meaning to ask, he had an incident with Corey Joseph early in the series, in the series where he literally, pretty much literally like punched him in the face. Like yep. it was, it, is that a suspension in your opinion if it wasn't the playoffs? To you guys, that's that's the game of technical, no? Yeah, yeah, the game of technical, the NBA. But to me, that 
I should have been in a, I should have I should have been an injection in the game because that was a clear like shot to the face where he looked like he was. And I think he had an incident with uh, with Thompson too, where he, like like it looked like he he fell on, but it looked like he, he did it on purpose. Like a couple of Jason Thompson, Thompson yeah. Right. Or Thompson was on the ground. I think it was in game uh, game five too, where he he fell and was twisted, and I swear he like kneed him in the head on purpose. He's definitely being he, uh, he, he, again he's, a piece of you know what piece of work. Yeah, he got stitched up. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna say he has it. He lost some teeth. Yeah, 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 yeah. He lost some teeth. Yeah. And, and there was no calls. And there were no calls. No Did you guys see? Um, yesterday he got in. Demari Carroll and him had a little thing in the third quarter. I think yeah. it was yeah. two. Yeah. He, he got his face. He didn't want a piece of the game. When he was getting hit like that, they were not giving him calls, and he was angry. So I'm, I'm not even crying about that. Like, yeah. if he's doing that, then I'm doing it back. As long as I don't get a suspension either. But I'm gonna play physical with that guy. You're not getting any layups. If you do yeah. get a foul, it will not be a nine one. I can promise and you that. That's what Carroll told them. Yeah. Carroll said no more easy buckets. Yeah. I think so, that he ended up guarding him in the third or the fourth for a little bit because and, and, Kyle could have. And they kept and again and Damari barely played the fourth quarter yesterday. I don't know if it was his wrist or whatever. He didn't play all that much in the fourth. They kept Corey Joseph in there who was getting schooled. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I just want to say one thing that I that I, obviously the ball movement. I told you about the DeRozan and Larry that almost fools goals the way they yeah, they're, they're great play. DeRozan's a very good player. Lowry's good, but not all stars to me. But what I look at is um, the culture of the way that they're behaving. When I watch the Raptors, I, I'm watching more than just the game. And what I've been seeing, why I will not be a fan of them, is I'm watching, first of all, there's a lot of crime. Every time Lowry doesn't get the call, you look. Yeah. You, know, you look at Casey. I wish that they show a uh, not zoom in on the player for me. Casey is crying just as much as them. It's almost like he's taught them to whine. This, I've never seen him like Pop Mitchell say, just go back, forget the call, I'll deal with the ref kind of attitude. It's always, we're all crying. I, I can't stand that. I, okay, I agree with that, <laughs> but the only thing I do have to say is, and anybody from Toronto knows more than anybody else, the Raptors get screwed out of a lot of calls. Whether it be a beyond goal basket interference or yeah, that, or that dragon game. shoulder, that's just one yeah, game. The Raptors get killed, so I feel like sometimes uh, you're second place in the East. The calls can't be that bad. Yeah, They've been crying when they're beating teams. The Raptors did get some calls in the East. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but come on. Like, even, with, even Wade, for example. Wade's been getting phantom calls all series. No, that's not what I mean. I'm, you're, talking, you're talking the series. I'm talking their behavior. This is not a change. No, that I, I see with. Lowry get oh, yeah, at the three-point line. Throw the ball and then literally cry. Like, are, you, yells, are, 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 the refs, are, are the refs? Are the refs know you cry ten out of ten times? Are they going to take it credible when you're going to them when you actually miss the call? If you stay silent and then the one time you yell, like, okay, maybe I missed it because this guy doesn't act like this. But every single time you cry, they're not going to listen to you. They, they won't listen to the coaches, and now you're in a baby mode. Like, I'll see them fall to the ground, can they get fouled, and they take forever to get yeah, But don't. Yeah. But don't the, like the majority of the NBA All Stars stars do the same. There's thing. a lot of cries, but not like LeBron. LeBron's, Lowry the, worst. Is, LeBron's the worst. Lowry, I, I will say that. Lowry, I, I, I've yeah. been telling people this forever that I talk to one of my friends, a huge Lowry fan, and I tell her all the time. Lowry complains the refs more than ever, especially when you're at the game and they don't know the TV time most, <laughs> and they don't show him talking to the refs yeah. after. He is always complaining to the refs. Don, you want to jump in there? Yeah, because you can't really argue well, with the fact that he argued in terms, of, in terms of Don's consp conspiracy theory, in terms of the refs are going to like screw the Raptors, yeah, who knows, tomorrow that, that might happen. I, I don't think the NBA wants the, the series, because realistically, the Raptors play well and they beat the Heat tomorrow, uh, like the refs can only do so much. Yeah, yeah, uh, at the end yeah. of the day, like, I mean, I just have Tony to Brothers has been kind of blind. It's still going to feel how they were calling the game last night, you know, with some of the calls, and it's like, and then the commentator, is just, it's everyone just talking about Oh, this American TV I, for you. But guys, wait, exactly. sorry, just one second. I, I understand cheating because I know the Lakers did it big time before. They were Sacramento. cheating. Yeah, when they cheated Sacramento before. I know that. But when a team is playing good and a team is getting cheated, even if I hate that team, I'm like, this isn't right. But you guys are looking at the wrong part. Even if there's some bad calls. I, well, I'll admit to that because I was even seeing that with Dragic. Let's, let's be with our team first before we deal with the rest. Are the Raptors are not playing well. Yeah. You guys know that. So why are we looking yeah, at... But neither are the Heat. Heat. Yeah, the Heat aren't yeah, playing well yeah, either. Yeah, no, 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 no. One thing I can say is, and I'll say this for someone said this to me. Someone said the Raptors should have had this wrapped up already. And yeah. someone said the Heat should have. You look at look yeah. at the first first three games went to overtime, right? Yeah. Okay, so the first game, the Raptors, in my opinion, shouldn't even have been in the game. Okay, yeah. they, they got lucky. They go to overtime. The right team won in overtime. Miami won. 
the second game, so like if both teams, like the Raptors are fooled goal because like, hey guys, we're still in this. They were never in the game, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Game two comes, Raptors were up, Miami comes back, Raptors been overtime. Raptors should have won that game. Game three, Raptors, who took, I don't even remember who Ra- took that. Raptors game. won game three. Raptors took game three in Miami, that's right, it was, okay, so they take it, they end up losing game four. Any of those games, you go back and look, maybe except game four, the first three games, you could have made a case for either team, any team could have won. Even yesterday, the, Raptors, the point I'm getting at is, neither team is playing well. Neither team is fully manned. So you can make an argument and say, okay, like, I we're not playing well, but we're still winning. So it's like game, game, four. game four went to overtime, not game three. That was the one the Corey Joseph the Corey Joseph, Joseph, the game. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. which, but the difference between, I agree 100% with what you're saying, but the difference between them is, I'm, I'm one thing I will not take away from the Raptors, they're playing hard. They're just not playing the right they're way to me. Well, yeah. I'm looking at Miami, even the announcer was just saying it yesterday, Joe Joel Johnson and them didn't even look interested. So even if they're both playing bad, the scary part to me is that Miami it looks, like, it looks like Miami's in cruise control yeah. and Miami, and Toronto who always plays hard. They really try hard, I can tell you that. But they're just not, they're like, Larry is dribbling viciously, you see him doing all stuff, and then you take up, there's only two people in the league, maybe three, Durant, should, should be shooting two steps back from three, and that's Curry and Damian Lillard. I don't know why Larry thinks he can shoot these shots from deep. Like, he does hit them sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, it's because he, he, he can hit them from half court and take it over time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he iced the game. Uh, he iced the game. But, the last win in Miami with like five. Yeah, 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 I saw that one. Like, you, you know when he was yeah, yeah, thinking, shot. what was he doing? Yeah, but, here, but, here, but here's the thing. This is why I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tad bit more confident about tomorrow. He said that those two guys are, are confident because they have been playing decently well the last few better. games, and they'll have the home court. The, the the intensity of the crowd will get them. They should win tomorrow. But the more com- that's, 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 that's your weakness. They play capability. But no, but that's your weakness now because if they play good, is the m- less ball movement they will be. They'll exactly. lose. If if Lowry and DeRozan are not playing well, they're forced to pass the ball, and that's when everyone's saying. No, but here's the thing. But game, game four, they didn't play well, and the Raptors had the Harry Raptors had that game. They both didn't play well. Uh, the, Lowry, the one where where uh, Lowry got fouled out. Lowry, yeah, DeRozan was DeRozan was crap. I was all over him on Twitter. That was the, that was that they game played game. terrible. And boy, and what happened there was DeMar Wasn't Carey Larry 9 for 20 in that game? But he no, had no, 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 no. Like, like, they gave both, like, 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 and DeRozan was, like, was like terrible. Uh, the, almost the entire game, he got benched. The only reason he, like, I was, I was asking for him to be benched the rest of the game because he was not terrible. But it doesn't have to be hot and cold. It could be a gray area where they can hit it, but not. But if they're hot, like, they're actually hitting their shots. Mm-hmm. If DeRozan and Lowry are doing that, to me, it's uh-oh. If I see them hot in the first quarter, I'm terrified. See, with, because with, I'm like, boy, these guys are not going to pass the ball. Thing, with, with better defense yesterday, they would have won the game yesterday. That's my that's my personal. Uh, it would have been another overtime game. They you think so? Lost overtime I think with better with better defense uh, there and the way that they were shooting the ball, it was their defense that let them down, not the offense yesterday. But even Ross, it was the defense. Even the last thing yesterday. Was- he was just horrible yesterday. But even Ross, he was hot, and they weren't even giving him the ball again. Like I, I well, yesterday, yesterday? No, no, Ross, yeah, Ross wasn't good yesterday. Ross was two good games first. Was. Two games ago. No, was last game. There's a game where he had the two dunks, right? The dunks was good. Address that. Um, these players know, like, yo, continue getting this guy the ball. Yeah, yeah, like, they it's don't the do that. the same thing that they do with JB. If they give him the ball early and then they stop giving him the ball. Like, Larry they, stops. It's, old, it, it's, it's the same thing every mm. single time. Yeah. And that's a coaching staff issue. Like, that's something that's, that you just gotta know. That's like, that's like basketball 101. <laughs> and, I, and I would agree with that because if you know what, <laughs> under Casey, if you look at the Raptors, I'm like, <laughs> Just look at the final play calling that the Raptors have, even since KG has been the coach. Whether it's the Brooklyn, whether it's the Brooklyn series, whether it's whatever it is, when the game's on the line, the sh- the plays that he calls make no freaking sense to me. I remember like game game seven against Brooklyn, that the Kyle Lowry thing. Drive. That was that was that was that was a drive into three people where he was he was hoping to get a very good. Lowry made the decision, and Lowry did what he wanted to do. The uh, play, the play. I guarantee there's supposed to be movement while he was driving exactly. for someone to get, and he decided to go all the way. I promise but, 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 you. Yeah, but look, look at the Corey Joseph thing. It was the, almost the exact same thing with the little. I don't know what he. Was I remember doing. Butch Carter. They mentioned it all on the pod. Butch Carter one time to get the ball back late. I think in the, in the, in the New York series. Put three guys on the freaking inbounder. Well, the inbounder couldn't do anything, and it was an automatic throw. That's the kind of stuff you like. Corey Joseph dribbling the ball for 20 seconds and, and, and hoping a pro- But that's not like him. I don't know why. Corey Joe again, I think he, he's won one ball. game this year, I think, when he when he hit yeah, a game winner. Three, which but but he could, if he's if he's stationary ready to get the Based ball, the I ball believe on him getting the shot, but not him dribbling. Not and his own shot. Yeah. At the end of the day, like 
again, as much as DeRozan like stunk that game, I would have rather had that ball in DeRozan's hand yeah. because at least you know he he's yeah, got more opportunities to do something there. I agree, but dribbling at least. I agree with what you're saying. This is a, uh, I'm gonna agree with you and what D was saying. This is what they do. It's kind of a mix up, which you guys are not like people don't really notice. If if JV is hot, right? They will give him the ball, but you're, all because someone's hot in the fourth quarter, you don't give them the ball every single play for four quarters. But if, if someone's catching on, you know, get some other guys some shot, but then you give it to him three times in a row. But them, Toronto, it's almost like, okay, throws his hot, shoot till he misses, then forget him for a bit. And then, no, don't forget him for a bit. Let's just do get some things. Involved. Yeah, let's get some people involved, but get back to him before he... Because it's not like someone doesn't go from hot to cold. They war, they cool off. So before he cools off, let's get him hot again. You know what yeah. I mean? They wait for like two quarters and get someone ice cold and say, do what you did for us in the first quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't do that. But see, but again, and I, and I go back to that example in that game, in that game four. Uh, Corey Joseph was playing decently. The hot hand, and I must have gave, give him everything. You've got to give Terrence Ross that shot at, uh, with some kind of movement, yeah. given because he was shooting the ball from three. I was like, damn, T. Ross came to play today, and he didn't get a touch. Yeah. Not one single touch. Well, honestly, the only thing is you say it like an I don't know. Terrence Ross, I've always been torn on like everybody else, but if he gets the ball and he starts dribbling off his foot out of bounds in the game, how much are you questioning Dwayne Casey even more? Like, he, he, you guys know this. Remember, he got stripped. There was two games. I don't know if they were back to back. Dwayne Wade picked his pocket on an inbound twice. Yeah, and again, he makes a bad decision. Twice, twice. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Like, that's the thing: decision making and handle. At least Corey Joseph, you know that he's not going to lose the ball. Maybe what they should have done is, and okay, maybe we'll finish off that. Maybe what he should have done is. Dribble a little bit to create a shot for Terrence Ross and kicked him. Maybe that. And what Demar was, uh, De- Lamar was saying was about how you want to keep guys involved. That's what the Spurs do so well in every other team. If JV is hot and you want to give him the ball, then you want to give it to someone else. Use those guys as a decoy because once you kick it to JV when he's hot, you're gonna get guys collapsing. You kick it out to Demar. You kick it out to Corey or Terrence. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So like, like back to go to that game four. Corey, Corey's got the ball. You have any confidence? Do you have any confidence that Corey hits that shot? I had, I had this much. Not off the dribble. Not no. off the dribble. You know why? Because he, he looks no. awkward. He looks very awkward doing that. Well, it doesn't look good. Too, if you go back and you watch it, we're gonna get to prediction in a second. We gotta wrap this up. You go back to and you watch that one ISO. I'm gonna put it up on Twitter. He put such. I don't even know who was guarding him. Nobody huge. He put such a high arc on that shot. It looked like you when you're playing ball, Don. And there's a guy that's like six inches taller than you. He's about to block your shot. You put so much trajectory on it. You just hope it goes in. That's what he did. It did not look like a natural shot. He just like I hope that this thing just swishes, did not touch, because he just threw it up in Corey, the net. Corey's a good backup uh, backup point guard, but he's not a guy you take that shot, man. You know what I think? Okay, sorry. You know what I think Casey's doing? I think he's listening to a lot of what people are saying and making decisions based off fear. For example. Why would you give it to DeRozan and he didn't hit a shot all game? Or why would you give it to Ross when you know that he might kick it off? No, we do the right play, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't. But giving the ball to Corey up top out of fear, because anybody knows if DeRozan's in the game, I don't care if he's 0 for 40, I'm going to trust that his instinct or maybe his flashbacks of looking at Kobe, maybe you'll hit a shot from the free throw line or something. Or give it to Terrence Ross. I wouldn't trust him off the dribble, but give it to him. Maybe he'll pump fake, do a step back, and hit a shot. But they, they, didn't, do that. they didn't do that out of fear. I guarantee you, it was out of fear. Yeah, just like and the, thing is, and the thing is, to add on to what Lamar is saying, like I do remember Casey was the one who who said that he's gonna ride and die with the with the players who yeah, got him yeah, six yeah. wins, right? And he didn't. And it's like you know you had an opportunity to ride and die with your all star, and That's a good you point. don't even give him the ball at all. Yeah. And like it may be that Lamar didn't even want the ball. Maybe That's the another thing. Maybe the Lamar didn't want it. You know, maybe the Lamar didn't feel like he can he can make that shot because at the end of the day. Situation. Um, speaking of myself, if I'm in that situation, I'm telling the coach, "Give me the ball." You know, I'm but he could have been a decoy. Play for me because I'm gonna make that shot. You know, like maybe Demar, maybe Casey didn't feel like Demar was confident enough. Maybe he like hey, it doesn't seem like he wants the shot. You yeah. know, yeah. Like, I, I can I one, see that. No, I definitely one. see that. My my final point on this, I don't know if, if you guys watched it, there was a little video up on uh, after the game or, or again I saw it on Twitter. During the huddle for that shot, Kyle got in the huddle. Kyle got in the huddle and you can see like Kyle saying, This is what we should do, this is what we should do and you see Corey Joseph just like wave him off and, and say that they were gonna be doing this instead. And you can see Kyle get like pissed. Kyle was getting mad at because Kyle was already out of the game but he was still involving himself. You don't see Casey do anything. It was like, Corey's like, you know what? I'm going to take it off the ice, so this is the play we're going to do. 
And that's you what think, it that's looked like. You think Kawhi it looked, won it? It looked like it was like a, 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 a Lamar, a, a LeBron James yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, took over the huddle, took over the huddle kind of thing, where, where he from just Corey said Corey Joseph. What, from, from, well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't even that. It looked like Corey Joseph was just saying, "I'm gonna do this," and Kyle saying, "Oh, maybe we should do something else." And Casey, it looked, looked like Casey was like a puppet, where he was just like the, the freaking David the, the old David Blatt, the old Cleveland right. coach, where LeBron would just call plays. And that's what it looked like. Corey just took over and said, "I'm gonna be doing this," even though Kyle was, I think, trying to tell him to do something else. You think? That's what happened. I'm telling you, it looked, like, it looked you, like it. Do you think that Corey Joseph wanted the ball in that situation? He did. I'm telling you. To, to shoot? To shoot? I'm telling you. It looked like it. Like, watch. Okay. I'll, I'll try to send I'll it to that. you. It was, I, I saw it on Twitter afterwards where they were arguing in the huddle. Yeah. And it looked like Corey just tell, telling him to, like, get out of here because you're not in the game. Do you, and Corey just, just wanted the wanted the shot. The only thing it I said about like. that real quick is I, Corey Joseph, like I said, I went to a lot of games. Corey Joseph, there's been times in a regular season game where he'll get the ball, have a wide open look, whether it be a 50 yeah, or a three shooting. pointer. He does not want to shoot the ball. That's why I found it weird that he took the two exactly. shots in a row. Two shots in a row. I was very surprised. He wasn't, even, he wasn't even having a hard game. I think game someone told him to do that. It couldn't have been his own decision. Uh, I think, that, I think that's not his game. More, more play calling. By okay. By Dwayne Casey. After all this, uh, we're gonna come back to his game seven prediction right now. It's gonna. I don't know you guys have. <laughs> all right. I, One I, more stat, sir. I don't. I think it's. I think it's. Oh and seven. Yeah. In day games in the first. No, no. I saw I what was it? Oh and th- I saw Owen. I thought it was double digits. No, it's it was seven old. when they're in, up in when they're up. When they, they have a chance to close out. Miami, Miami's never won a game seven on the road. And Toronto's Owen thirteen during day games in the playoffs. Yeah. I think I posted that in the group. And Zane and Zane posted something too, which shows some kind of pattern from last year, which means nothing. Yeah. Just, it's it's, nothing it's, really, it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm taking the Raptors to win tomorrow. Um again, like that's when I usually do that, they, they usually lay an egg and lose. But to me, it just it seems like it's a perfect storm where the, the two officers are starting to play better, uh, and they get the home court advantage. And I think they'll they'll be more pumped. They'll play better defensively, and that'll get that'll get them through. I think Wade's gonna have a big game. Uh, I don't. I think Dragic will, will cool will, will cool off, and then they'll find a way. They, they'll, they, it'll be a close game too. Uh, it'll be about a five point game. Maybe overtime in game seven. God, John, I hope not. John, let's hear your pick. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the Raptors. I'm gonna go with the Raptors to win uh, Game Seven. It's gonna be, it's gonna be one of those, you know, nail biters. You know how the Raptors they always like to give their fans a heart attack. So I feel like it's gonna be one of those heart attack games. One possession game. Yeah. Okay, Lamar. I think uh, it's gonna be heat. <laughs> not, not, not because there's, there's other factors at play. Not because like there are whatever. I, I haven't seen either team play well. But I know that LeBron wants to play uh, Wade. I know he's going to give him that call. You better not lose. Um, Charlotte played amazing against him in the series. And they just slaughtered Charlotte by 20 in, in the game seven of their game, even though it was in Miami. Yeah. Okay, but I'm just saying, I just don't. Um, there was a couple of question, questionable calls in game seven. I feel in the Indiana thing that gave, in, gave Raptors the win. They won't get that kind of benefit this time. If anything, it will go against them, but not enough for conspiracy theories. I think, I just, I really, I don't picture Toronto winning. If they do... Then we're gonna. I'm gonna have to hit on them we'll all. Be the just like you'll be saying, come back. <laughs> well, I think uh, real quick. Next the thing with the conspiracy before I make my pick is, I feel like since there's like a watershed moment at times where it can't be like the last call of the game where someone goes up like and like Kyle where he could have got fouled against Garnett whatever that was. The, the refs can't make that call at the end of the game. There's little things that lead up to it. For example, that beyond goal thing. That's two points that the Raptors could have had later in the game. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the Raptors, there might be one of those kind of things where if the Raptors get some you know, questionable calls the whole series and it comes down to that at the end. Based on history, based on the way the Raptors are playing, veterans, as much as I hate using veterans come up in, in the big playoffs, I have a feeling that Miami wins this game. Um, and whenever I go against the Raptors, they win. Whenever I don't go against the Raptors, they win. So I, I'm going to go with Miami. I actually think that Miami's going to win, but I thought the Pacers would too. But yeah. um, it's... It, uh. the, the, the whole conspiracy theory thing, though, I mean... Will the if, if will the Raptors give the Cavs a better series? Will the Heat give the Raptors a better series? It's to me, it's about it's all, it's it's money. It's, 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 to me, it, like without why if Whiteside can't play and you know you don't have Bosch and I don't think that'll that'll be a, a big test for Cleveland anyways. I think Cleveland struggled more against Toronto and depending on if Val- Valanciunas would come back for the series and when he would come back. They probably have a harder series with Toronto, to be honest. But I think Cavs will sweep uh, either so team, too. but there's no um, marketing. Three sweeps in a row? No, no way. No, I bet no there's no sweep in the next round. No, no way. Who's the better chance? Who's the better chance for you? Miami or Toronto versus Cleveland? Oh. I think I think Miami I think Miami has the best chance of winning all game. I think but Toronto gets swept by them. Really? I'd say Toronto has a better chance. Well, I they played them way better than this. I would say that uh, Toronto would lose, but Toronto would take at least a game or two off of it. Yeah. I agree with I agree with Iggy. I think Toronto will get at least a game or two. Yeah. 
I'd say I'd say three. It won't be no. It won't be like that. I don't think. I don't think. Has there ever been like three sweeps in a row in the in the NBA playoffs for a team? I don't think Jordan did that. I don't think Jordan did that. That's 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 a hard task. All right, Raptors fans, forgive us. Uh, forgive us, everybody here, for doing like that. Maybe Iggy and Don. Um, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come back talk about what OKC did last series. We return on the block.